see where I'm just thinking. Almost double that right now. I know. You are you are Twitch famous. Hello, Swipe Quills. Hello, Nougaty Knight. I guess. It's orcs versus vampires. Let's hope you do a little better with the uh, SVP pinatas than the halfling game. We'll see. They're not that fragile. That's one of the really, really good ways to lose against vampires is to underestimate the thralls. They're not that bad. Mm -hmm. Yes, you get to see me play. Hi, Elsa. I don't know if getting to see me play is that much better than the other people in the league. I'm not that good, but okay. Everybody says that, uh, well, I don't know, I guess that's that's not a fair comparison, but a lot of the reason hmm. that people say shorts are such a hard counter to Amazons is it turns them into thralls effectively. So, if you get just regular thralls, you just nobody you just them. have to you just have to deal with vampires. Oh, you've only seen me play in the tutorial game. Has it been that long since I've streamed one of my games? Hmm. No, you, you just played uh, Nurgle Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, I guess I did stream one recently, but maybe people didn't see it. Fair enough. Yeah, this is literally the first time I've ever played a game as orcs, though, so don't expect me to be a pro with this team or anything like that. I feel your pain, bro. You'll do right proper, don't worry about I, it. I, I, went the same, I did the same thing with chorfs. I will try to do right proper. Thank you. I just hope you don't blame me since I convinced you to get orcs. You're not the only one. Like a million people told me to try playing orcs. Orcs isn't, like, super different than other races, though, so I... I can't imagine there's any learning curve there. You'll you'll do just peachy. They're just slow as fuck. Yeah. That's all. Well, I'm used to slow as fuck teams. That's not a problem. Let's say they're, they're essentially. Yeah. This is the weakest slow as fuck team I've played though. It's it's essentially a Nurgle, except you trade the beast and the stench shit for uh for some block and some for more speed. a bunch of actually good positionals. Yeah. yeah. That I would actually want to use. Or blisters are really good. Oh yeah, they are. They're wonderful. It's as we've been discussing this a little bit, and it's a lot like playing Dark Elves. It's actually very similar. A lot like you play Dark Elves, yeah. A lot like I play Dark Well, in general they play a lot like Dark Elves. I mean you can kind of you can kind of half ass pass. You know, you can do short passes and crap like that, but really you're mostly playing a you know, you're playing a bashy, slow game. And the big, awesome part of your team is you get four blitzers. Which are wonderful pieces. Yep. True. Sure hands worked. Just pointing that out to people. Never get your hands. Yeah. Now, if you're going to stop it for free, that's fine. It's different. To people. When you spend a skill on sure hands, nothing mocks you. I have spent a skill on sure hands and it works. It's well, a good so skill. I. But I'm still going to continue the joke. Continue the dumb running gag? It, is there any other kind of running gag? Not really. What the hell, by the way, happened in the other game? Oh, it's oh, it's still the first half. I didn't hear that. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering what he was doing. Yeah. Break armor on the blork on the first block. Oh well. He's just having a rest. Moving that uh, one movement to punch. Was Moving it? that one square was real rough for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's only got four he, movement. He needs a Gatorade or something. Yeah. <laughs> or would that be Gatorade? 
I hear that's the thing with orcs. You're supposed to. My orcs drink right? Haterade. You're, you're supposed to jam orc into anything that remotely sounds like orc. Hate orc aid. I hate I hate orc like orc name puns as much as I hate fucking cheese puns. Well, yeah. yeah. Puns well, the the worse. point of the puns is, I mean, they're bad. Right. That is the gag. A lot of right orky words. It's just it's fun to say orc over and over again, or it's stupid and fun to say orc and orc, orc over and over again. Alrighty, let's see. That's a lot of thralls just hanging out back there. That's a lot of thralls just hanging out back there. I intend to punch things. It's a bit of a violent attitude. You should get some counsel. My plan is to punch. In case you haven't played against vampires before, I can actually provide one tip for people. Since Hypnotic Gaze is so good at breaking into cages, what you want to do is kind of extend your cage out extra squares, like what I'm doing with a splitzer right now. So he can't just Hypnotic Gaze this guy, tie up this guy, and just blitz in for a two-die block for free. I'm not saying I'm you know, doing it exactly right or anything, but that's the idea in theory. The Mega Bunker. It's you play a big, huge, extended cage, pretty much. Oh, wah! I got rerolls for that. We're good. That's what rerolls are for. Rerolls are for skulls. And you got another free one as well. Yeah, I got a freebie. I consider that the freebie. So yeah, because the cage isn't just five guys, it's kind of extended out a little bit. You kind of stop them from gaze hypnotic that. gazing in, just diving in. Yeah, you need to move your whole team together, and that's what I want to do as orcs anyway. Admittedly, I wouldn't normally play with this tight of a cage with orcs, like a real super standard cage. But, you know, it's kind of a function of the team I'm playing against. But basically my goal is to very slowly bash my way up the field and hopefully do some damage. Because if I can injure some guys, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for him to do stuff. Yeah, so... Yeah, because I have this nice tight cage, there was no hypnotic gaze stuff involved. And he can't really do much more than, like, plow in with this one vampire. Maybe dodge another one in doing something weird I don't see yet. But we'll see. But basically when you're playing vampires, you need to assume, well, is are all of my plans going to fall apart if this guy just suddenly loses his tackle zones? Because that happens a lot against vampires. This vampire has now a really bad tone, though. Um, it's kind of hard for him to do too much. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he's going to get up and block my black orc with his thrall, possibly. Or maybe he's just going to base up my cage, which I welcome wholeheartedly. I am quite happy with that. You didn't re-roll it. Yeah. I might have re-rolled that. Not because he can't get to a thrall, but because the thrall being there was actually kind of useful. And you don't want him on the ground. If he just keeps losing players to the general... 
I eat my guys, I'm okay with that. Things tend to get better for me as the turn goes on because of bloodlust. As long as nothing really weird happens. The legendary thrall screen. Right. Almost as good as the camera passing game. And now I need to seriously consider whether or not I want to fall the vampire. This is a very legitimate foul situation, actually. I agree. One thing I think we can all agree on, don't do it with the ball carrier. No, it will be done with this lineman who's back here. Oh, you're going to laugh at that? I've seen someone do Seen it. people do that? Yeah, this is going to be a foul. Is there anything else I want to do first before I foul? My cage is safe enough. Yeah, I'll foul now. Falling with the ball carrier. Goodbye, lineman. Well, my stream is crazy, so... Well, Apparently see any I got a stun, and I'm kicked off. I am pretty That's okay with that. Good. I'm okay with that. Um, because, basically, I don't see that he's going to be able to do much damage to me, and I intend to move up my cage this turn. The only reason that vampire was really annoying to me is because he's literally sitting inside my cage. If I didn't do something nasty to him, then he's there in my cage next turn, and he can stand up and blitz. Oh, he just reroll bloodlust, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did reroll that bloodlust. That's Ooh, bad that news. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so the cage will move up this turn. And that vampire is stunned, which is wonderful news. And because I stunned the other vampire, I can actually probably move up my cage annoyingly far. Unless I roll terrible stuff. No, I'm not going to foul again. I'm not up on people anymore. Or you could just fail block dice. Or I could fail block dice. We're okay now. I kind of should do safe stuff first, but I actually want to move my cage up this way, and I kind of need to open stuff up to do that. So the only thing I need to worry about is that vampire up there, and the one who's down here won't have as much movement. So where does the cage go? I can't go as far as I would have originally hoped, because... Well, black orcs are part of my cage. And I'm a very slow cage. We'll go here. Very nice. And again, I'm going to take my guys and kind of extend out my cage a few extra squares to make the bloodlusts harder. Um, we'll get this block in first. And skull it. Okay. Cheese and crackers, Batman. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Well, the only other thing I was going to do was take this lineman and one GFI him there to extend the cage out, but the black orc kind of serves the same purpose to a degree. So it's not the end of the world that he didn't get up. It's bad, but not horrible. And yeah, as you can see, the foul that I did on this vampire pretty much left him KO'd for just the right amount of time. I just didn't want him being inside my cage for a turn. 
I'm totally fine with him being down a few squares away from my cage. Oh, the Chaos team in the other game is gonna... It's getting beat up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, three KOs and one injury. In the second oh, that's so not too bad. The real problem you eventually run into, the problem I'm going to run into eventually is basically that, so I'm extending my cage out. I'm trying to keep him from doing hypnotic gaze garbage with his vampires, which is great. But eventually my players are going to get more tied up and that's going to get harder to do. Because like, as you can see, there's a bunch of my cage pieces which are in um, tackle zones right now. Could you click on a thrall for me? Any thrall? Any thrall will do. Yeah, right. he's... I couldn't remember if Thrall said two or three agility. He could have gazed the Black Orc, and he may as well have, honestly. Oh, wow. That's a very brave Thrall, but his corpse being there is actually very annoying for me. Because otherwise, Black Orc would have moved up through where his corpse is and blitzed the vampire. But now I can't do that. He's actually better there as a corpse than he is as a standing up piece, surprisingly enough. So, okay, we'll actually get this guy up this time. Yeah, there's occasionally times when a body lying on the pitch is better than an actual piece, and that's one of them. So that vampire needs to shove off somehow. Yeah, you don't always think of what good a guy's body lying on the ground is going to do for you, but sometimes it does. I'm going to try this. Should I try that first? I think I'm going to move him. No, he's in a tackle zone. I'm going to do this first. That's good enough for now. Now Blort can two die block you. I got block. Seven steel. I know, right? And I think the thrall may have to just stay there, and my cage is just gonna have to stay where it is, unfortunately. Um, I can. No, I can't do anything that's better than what I've got right now. I think. Can I move out this way? You can get to me. You can get to me. Yeah, this is no better. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get, unfortunately. I would rather the ball be surrounded by a million of my players than a few of my players. 
What was the thing that you were considering? Like Where, moving my different? moving my thrower out over here was one of the things I was considering, but his thralls can still get to me. Moving the thrower this. up here, oh, moving it like over to the um left on my screen was one thing, but the thralls can still get there. Um, what, what thrall could get to you? Um, actually, like unless I made GFIs, all three of them could have made it without GFIs, even the two downed ones. Well, they'd have to dodge. They would have had to make dodges, but, like, he's got three rerolls and there are three agi pieces. That's still safe enough, and one of them didn't have to make a dodge. Um, I was considering moving the thrower up a couple of squares and dealing with this thrall, basically, and moving my black orc here on the vampire, but, like I said, if this if that fails, I have fewer of my big angry orcs surrounding the ball, so I'd rather have a bunch of angry orcs surrounding the ball. True. Okay, so we're going to get very similar stuff here. Let's see if he re-rolls it. No? Okay. He seems to be pretty content just trying to have me in. Oh, I would be too. I mean, I am a slow team. Your job is to get me, keep me as far away from the end zone as possible so whatever I do on turn 8 has to be super risky. That is your goal. My goal is to get as close as I can so whatever I do is not super risky. Okay, let's see. So I can get cutesy with chain pushes here for sure, and I probably will. Lork, you block a guy. Because you're slow anyway. There's an injury. Miss next game. Spoilers, bro. Oh, I injured a thrall. He got a miss next game. I mean, no one ever saw that coming come into the game. I know. Thrall injuries? What's that crazy game. shit? Yeah, I had to think about it a little bit. Okay, two stuns. Now we are in a situation where I will gladly run my thrower over here. A thrall badly hurt? What is this bullshit? I know. Now we will do this. I think he's more confused and afraid because he wasn't the one that did it. I know. Those are my guys to chew on. And just in case things go wrong, do I want him up? Uh, he's more useful to me standing up than that one in six chance he falls over and I don't want to blow a reroll on it. I like the fact that the two vampires are pretty tied up right now. User joined your channel. Hi, user. Sup? Playing my demo bowl game. Yeah, I saw that half eye you went into it. Turn six. I am streaming it. I am threatening scoring next turn. He can absolutely block me, but I made it very risky. 
there are three vampires. Um, the reason I didn't do anything with this blitzer is because, in theory, the block against the thrall who doesn't have block is really, really safe. But just in case, I want to leave this guy here and make life harder on these vampires. The third one up here is basically the one piece on the board I have to worry about. This guy right here, Mad Splatter. Yeah, because that blitzer was up, which he probably would have been with the thrall, but not necessarily. It made this vampire do a block on this guy, and it's a two-die block, but he's two-die blocking without block skill onto my guy with block skill, so I'm okay with that. And there's a Hypnogaze fail, and a rerolled Hypnogaze fail. So that's Ouch. wonderful news. Yeah, okay. For those of you kids playing at home, Hypnogaze is an agility check. Don't stand in two tackle zones when you're trying to Hypnogaze. Correct. Hypnogaze takes into account enemy tackle zones. Um, if I can do something about this thrall, I can stall. So I will try to do something about this thrall. And that's good enough. Now I can very safely stall. Don't do what? Never stand on the sidelines. No one can reach me. I'm aware of that. Not even with two karma. GFIs. Bad karma, man. Just for the bad karma? Better, I, better I had a, a tragic experience in the playoffs with standing on the sidelines and I'm still scarred from it. I, I'm not sure which. Banshee's gonna come out of nowhere and surf you. Right. The crowd will come in and pull me out into the crowd for a surf. Dude, plus the <laughs> lineman will just appear. And just start dodging through tackle zones and push you out. <laughs> right. A wild surfer has appeared. Use surf. Surf is always super effective. <laughs> Or 20 surf every day, bro. And that's pretty much all I want to do. Flash, flash, flash. Flash, 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 and be a lucker noob is good. Yeah, okay. Um, I could have fouled the vampire with my lineman, gotten three assists on it. I, I kind of don't want to. Part of the problem is. Since I'm playing against vampires, um, like I said, you need to kind of extend your cage out, and to do that, there's a real minimum number of players you kind of need on the pitch to do it. So, I don't want to lose too many players to getting kicked off for fouling. I mean, one is okay, I guess, but I really don't want to start getting down to like seven or eight players on the pitch. Because there's then I can't reason. cage up. There's another reason you don't want to follow in this situation. This is his drive, so no matter what he does, the other team's going to get a turn at the ball. So that means two chances for KO rolls. So of the pos of, of the, the chance of knocking the vampire out, you're either going to get KO or Kaz, Kaz being the smaller likelihood. More than likely, you're, if you get anything out of it, you're going to KO him. He's going to get two rolls, which by the numbers, he should make one of them to get right back in the game, so you may lose alignment and get absolutely... I will take the manor touchdown. I love that. The the slow movement guys barely even move into the other square, they just kind of hobble along. Yeah, they just kind of hobble in. So we are 10-10, to 10. I'm okay with that. And... It, it was no skink squirrel, but it was pretty... It good. is turn 8, so I just defend against a one-turn touchdown here. I've totally trademarked that, by the way. What? The skink, the skink squirrel. Swirl. Skink swirl? Yeah, that little ring around the rosy I did. Ah. Who's streaming? Diamond Ball Fake? I am. Yes. Do I want the blorks here or spread out? Um, I, I want them here. I might actually be uh, playing my game in a little bit, too. Cool. 
Um, if I wanted to make the one turn touchdown a little bit harder, I would have spread out the black orcs. But if I spread out three black orcs, he's not going to go for the one turn touchdown. He's just going to punch my guys. And this is a slightly harder formation for him to get a bunch of punches on. So that's I why I did he's that. Go for the one turn touchdown anyway. No, he's Obviously. not going to try it. With a with a primarily three strength team, and you've got the advantage of the four strength like lineman, I would think spreading them out would make it a little easier. Easier for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason I didn't no, spread them out. Spreading out makes it harder because you have to fill more gaps. Yeah, that's true. It's more squares, but the punches are easier. So I guess it's a six and one kind of a thing. Uh, it's, it's in very theory hard to fill the gaps you need because um, so if that black works one to the left, there's now a spot that he has to get to before he can and fill before he can do any chain push stuff. Balls. In theory, like it's possible to do it either way. Um, in practice. There's a lot of information out there about how to do a one-turn touchdown against this formation I've got right here. There's a lot of information about that. Not as many people know how to do the um, split line one-turn touchdown, and I can tell you right now, I don't. I would it's also possible, but I don't know how to do it, and the information's a little less available. I would imagine it would involve putting most of your guys over on one side of the line of scrimmage and coming around the top and punching one of the guys back into your line, like coming around and pushing him down and out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So basically you single him out from the rest of the group. But you'd almost have to have 11 to do it. Right. It's in any case so hard with a movement six team like vampires. Yeah. yeah. Don't vampires have seven? No, all six. Wow, I thought vampires had seven for some reason. Organize my players before kicking off. Let's make a legitimate formation this time. I feel like I've seen this formation somewhere before. You probably have. You seem to be missing the bloodthirster in the middle, though. Yeah, that'd be nice. I wouldn't mind yeah, having a bloodthirster on my orc team. That's maybe a stupid question, yes, that'd but be awesome. can you actually save formation so that it works? Save formation? I don't know, honestly. Um, I Don't get me wrong, I'm willing to bet... So if you lose a player, it kind of messes everything up. And okay. I'm willing to bet, I don't know if you can save formations in-game, but I bet it's saved in some XML file somewhere, and you can totally just make your own formations. It changed the default ones, yeah. Could be. Yeah. That's an interesting setup he's going for. Yeah, I don't know oh, what no. the plan is. No, well, his turn for a free reroll. And of course, there's one of those, kick it to the center of the pitch, and oh well, it still goes out. Yeah, it seems to happen a lot. Well, it was all, it was all it's, a perfect kick. Yeah, that would have been great if it had scattered like over to the corner instead. I'm okay with that. But yeah, there's still places it can get to where if you get an unlucky bounce, it still goes out. It can't land anywhere that's off the pitch, but if you bounce unlucky, it can still happen. Well, okay. I had a game earlier where I kicked the ball into the precise corner, mm -hmm. and then the kickoff event it was pitch invasion, and he he had like three dudes up. Ew. Yeah, pretty much. It was. User disconnected from you're the not channel. gonna do anything. Yeah. On the bright side, with a four agility team, like there wasn't much doubt that he was going to pick it up anyway. It's not like a uh, kick out of bounds versus Camry or something. But he saved the bloodlust rule in this case. Mm. All right, this is the undead team that I actually like. Hmm. Oh, vampires. Oh yeah. Uh, vampires are fun. They're not like a top tier team, but they're they're good. 
you, they're uh, far more uh, difficult for like a new player to get right though. Uh, I mean the theme. Oh, oh yeah, bloodily ever after. Yeah, it's um, bloody. Looks like Disney movies mostly. Mostly, yeah. It's mainly just um fairy tales and bloody stuff. Mhm. Mm Taking the one die. I'd imagine you're cheering for those. I'm okay with him taking one die blocks on me. Gotta play for those six rerolls sooner or later. Yeah, absolutely. If he uses rerolls for stuff other than bloodlust, I'm always happy. All right, and let's see. Your theme is famous people and fruit? Yep. Caligulime, Pericles, Leonardo da Vinci. Good I stuff. Caligulime. Mean, I, I like Caligulime. What? Genius. Oh, you're in a tackle zone now, Black Orc. You're not getting up yet. Because first thing I'm doing, I'm blocking this dude. Oh, that's helpful. Jerry? Nah, KO on a vampire. Good enough for me. Ooh, no reason to get greedy. Because don't vamps have uh, regen? They do. They do. So yeah, I'd, I'd almost rather have a KO than an injury. No, I'd take the injury, but... Uh, Even if he successfully passed the regen, I'd still take the injury. Just I'll, the take, I'll take SPP any day. But that's a scoring threat gone now, so it's safer for you. Yeah, pretty much. Makes my life a lot easier. What are you talking about, bro? Thralls are clearly the scoring threats in this team. What are you talking about? They're like all. Uh, <laughs> only in Knorr's team, where he apparently has to use his thralls instead of his vampires. And again, this was another thing that Knorr was talking about a lot when you're dealing with passing teams. Since some guy down there to kind of threaten them, it really will make the life harder on him. Mistake I make all the time. By not sending the guy? Yeah. Yeah, send some well, guy to at least be pesky and take that two die against if nothing else is happening and be really obnoxious. I could have one more guy to cover the, the threats to score. That's totally the smart move. Then they just chill in the back and um, set up again. I don't know if putting black orcs on the line isn't good. I This is literally the first game I've ever played with orcs. And I just say, yes. okay, put the four strength dudes on the line. It's not bad. I mean, the they make really, really slow linebackers if you don't put them on the line. Uh, especially in this instance, like, if he's got thralls throwing one die blocks because of the way he's set up, that's a good setup. User joined your channel. It did not happen. Hi, user. On him this time, but, like, it's, it's good in Fake's favor. Eventually like, it will bite him in the ass. Against Chaos and maybe even Lizard Men, maybe not, because they'll have their own strength four guys. Yeah. So they'll get two dice against, but against a team that's like strength three on the line, it's bloody picture perfect. Yeah, it's annoying if you don't have any four strength guys to deal with it and you're not putting vampires in the line. At the, was... at the, at the very least, in order to get two dice, they're going to have to waste a guy's movement for the extra assist, so. Mm -hmm. And that's a win. Yeah. You would think about it against a team with a scary Claw player, maybe? Yeah, like, Claw kind of changes the way things work, too. Like a scary Thurstor? Yeah. A Frenzy Claw player? Yeah. That's crazy talk. Claw players are friendly, they just like hugs. I agree. <laughs> yeah, they're friendly until they burst ogres, and then the inferiority complex of the Blood Thurstor actually shows up. Okay, cool. I like using rerolls and dodges. <laughs> Ooh, two die roll. against. Wow. What a ballsy throw. Yeah, that is a 
gutsy gutsy block. Okay, let's see. Didn't really solve anything, cause it did you actually. Know. Not really. It it cost the black work that he's basing two movement. Because before that black orc could have punched him free and he could have advanced about that black orc. Now he's uh, got that one free, but he's two, two squares back. Granted, it was risky and I wouldn't have done it, but he did get something out of it. This is another thing I do. I don't know if it's always right, but I like tying up players in the cage. Just random ass guys like this thrall back here. It's really fucking it annoying. really makes it difficult for him to do what he wants to. Yeah, it's a great way to piss people off. I mean, he cage. has to find new cage pieces or make dodges with pieces he... and use rerolls maybe he really doesn't want to. The most depressing of black ties. Skull push. Yeah. Mm. Skull push happens. And I'm pretty okay with that. Well, so far so good. You haven't had to use a reroll. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with this. Again, Same it's time. vampires. I mean, hypno gaze, and you're basically out. But the more dumb rolls like that I make him make, the happier I am anyway. How many times has he bloodlusted? Uh, he's failed one bloodlust that he didn't. He failed two bloodlusts he didn't reroll. One was on turn eight, and he was just doing a vanity pass. The other was earlier on in the game. And it was one I may have re-rolled because he took a thrall out that was kind of in a good blocking place that he probably would have been happier with if it was there. Hmm, so his vampires seem pretty behaved then. His vampires are pretty well behaved, which is always helpful. So what are you going to do with your cage? Yeah, problem is, what do you do now when you have no scoring potential? Well, he's moved this thrall up where he's free. He's got thralls, bro. He could totally score. I mean, he may just pass to the thrall. I don't know. Oh, he can score, but he's not scoring this turn. Okay, failed dodges are cool. Uh, he shouldn't have passed from there because I got an interception attempt, but... Yeah, that's that was the goal. Is it just vampires that have that weird passing, like, ball floating thing? No. The, the stupid ball floating thing. passes happens all the time. None of my teams that I've ever seen pass else other than vampires does it. It's always like a, it, a zip. No, it happens it all the time when I'm spectating. Well, okay. Oh, he's relatively okay with that both down. Let's see. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, but let's move pieces first and be a good player. Okay. Let's imagine I'm a good player for a bit. It's pretty hard. Hi -oh. <laughs> Roll playing. It's pretty Roll difficult. Playing, Yeah, he's fine there. Well, I just learned something relatively important stuff cool. first. 
Looks like we got a tie in the other game. Oh, what heresy is that? This is a demo ball when no one practically ties. Well, okay. So I guess he's there. Is he in range? Oh, he's absolutely in range. Do any of those dodges actually make him scoring harder? Uh, if I'd been a little smarter with my blitzer, I could have made it a little harder on him. I may still try it. Ugh. Let me do some other... Do I do other blocks first, or do I try the dodge and two GFIs? Dodge and two really? GFIs is... 40-something percent chance of working. I've used my reroll. I don't care about most of these other thralls. Uh, so it's 40%. I'll do some blocks first. Two dies. And now this is about 40% chance of working, but this is the only thing I can do that actually makes the dodge and scoring harder. Hard part done. Yes, okay. And now I'll take the one die block with block skill and fail it. The world's fastest work. Okay, we're good. I... that... That makes his life a lot harder. Pretty sure somewhere there's a nerf with two movement allowance. You were you were upset about where you put your blitzer. But it was actually a really good spot. Which one? Oh, this blitzer. Like the, the, the one you punched with. If he had gone here instead, like one square down, then I could have taken this blitzer and put him diagonally next to the thrall with no GFIs. Which would have been nice. Uh, right, but if you oh, that, okay. What happened? Oh, all right. We got a defense That's here. Why you don't blitz with the ball carry on unless it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, that was what, what quite was risky. If you had if you had done it like you wanted to do it, then that vampire could have just hypno gaze you, and he could have dodged out and scored. Well, you'd, you'd if, side of if he had moved one square south, yeah, that's right, he would have had a one dodge. Then you're right. Yeah, the, the risky thing I did was better. Yep. I mean, you could have just blitzed him to the sideline right from the start. Um. Yeah, I don't know if I approached him from the best area. You go here. Because I want my thrower free. Thrower take away assist. I, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, because I got the KO, I can surf him. I didn't want to move him down because I was worried about what happens if I fail. But that KO is perfect, so now I can totally surf him. I can totally surf him. I assume by that you, yep. <laughs> He totally surfed him. I totally surfed, surfed him. It just took a reroll. We reroll well spent. You know, worth it. Now there's only one vampire on the pitch. Um, Four which times. blitzer is better to get the ball with? Uh, if they're equally 
same distance? I think the guy who's down below the thrall is in a more important defensive position. Indeed he is. So, Nepal, yeah, <laughs> that would have been a little more annoying if I'd used that tro that blitzer to do it, so. But do you trust the French, though? Never I'm okay with that. French. I should not have trust trusted a French guy to pick up the ball, right? Yep. <laughs> Napoleon, bon apricot. I'm just saying, if you want to see who's smart enough to pick up the ball, I'll go with Sigmund. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Figman, Figman he, Freud would have been better. But like, you know, legitimate Blood Bowl reasoning, he was in a more important defensive spot and I didn't want him to move. Am I, I'm up players, am I going to foul? Only if, like, it's going to prevent, if he's really, really preventing me from doing something because it's late in the game, it's not that important for me to foul unless, like, Vampire dodges into my cage or something. And you get like six assists around him, and then you stop yeah. on him with like a lineman. Yeah, right, that's maybe. The only situation I could see where fouling is reasonable. Yeah, this is a do not risk very hard with fouling. Okay, the let's really see. The important question then is when are you going to employ the throw the ball into the ground strategy? Because I hear that works well. Totally. More importantly, that. Poor Thrall is going to get murdered. Yeah, he is. But you get here to make Ball a little safer in case I fuck up first. It's never happened. Oh, well, I'm up, so I, if I score, great, but it's not the end of the world if I don't. And now, to be... Let's be honest here, I didn't make a vamp team to try and win any games. Eh. You can still play a vamp team and win games, easily. So the really obnoxious part that I want to be super, super careful about here is... If I... Don't pick up the ball and it gets scattered to a bad place. Terrible, terrible things could happen. So I want to tie you guys up a bit first. Except you're in a tackle zone. I want to do that first before I attempt to pick up. We're good. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, that was a bit risky. I thought you were going to do a handoff to the thrower. I, I didn't think any of those things. I thought you were going to pick it up with the sure hands thrower since it was on the sidelines. Yeah. Maybe he didn't have faith in sure hands. That's my guess. <laughs> sure hands is cast. <laughs> Zoom. Run like a fast orc. Oh, wait. Run like the fastest orc possible, six movement. You block first because... I would feel happier if thralls are knocked down. You're stunned. That's wonderful news. Makes your life a lot easier. And the other one is tied up, no? Yeah, and the other one is tied up. Vampire has to go through hell if he even wants to try and get anywhere near that action. Yeah. Are there any teams considered too strong or imbalanced? There are no teams that are considered too strong. There are teams that are weaker. That if you're playing them, you are going to have a more difficult time. They made the dodge. And there are teams that are like basically yes. kill teams. Um, the teams that are weaker, that are imbalanced in a I'm very weak way are um, halflings for sure um, ogres I would goblins. say goblins for sure corn to an extent corn a little bit but not too too badly corn at the start but when corn gets skill ups they are very scary so the problem is getting in there 
Vampires are generally not bad, but yes, with the Nega trade, it's always going to be gimmicky. And yeah, gimmicky. all of the teams that are bad are the teams that look like boy, that looks like it'd be fun to play, like halflings and ogres and goblins and all that kind of shit. They're the teams that look like boy, that would be fun. And admittedly, they are. You just have sure. to go into it knowing that you're, you can win games and you can be competitive, but you need to not be upset if you're not because the odds are not really in your favor. The odds are against you. Well, Thralls can still blitz with a dodge and two GFIs. But he can't also get the ball unless he does the exact same move with another Thrall. So I'm not too, too worried. There's the dodge. Yeah, the GFIs. Okay, so... User in your channel timed out. I want some guys to be free. User entered your channel. Hello, user. Okay, that was a little lucky. It was me. Try to restart my internet so I could watch the stream, but I don't think it's gonna work. Apparently, I suck at math. And we'll get a blitzer touchdown. I'm happy with that. Huzzah. But yeah, there's. No teams that are considered overpowered. Dwarves are not overpowered. They can be annoying no to play against, but they are not. No one really is. Um, the teams that are considered, like, real top tier, actually, like, half the teams are that, very good. I would say that varies depending on the team value and the format. Yeah. It varies a whole lot like, depending on team value. Because, like, short format, Amazon's... Yeah. I think that beats no matter what. Um, but I'm sorry, really, Panda. like, good teams, not right. imbalanced, but very good teams include, like, Undead, Lizards are good. Chaos at higher TV. Chaos at really high TVs is brutal. Humans are really solid. Yeah, humans, orcs are always solid. Underworld. Huh. Underworld. <laughs> that, yeah, no. That, that's another team that can be really good at high team values. It takes high team values for them to be good, but are any elves better than the others? Not really. All the elf teams are pretty good. Dark elves are the hardest ones to play. El Elfy teams are kind of play style dependent. Like, if you like to play punchy, you're probably going to gravitate towards either high elves or dark elves, probably dark elves. If you, uh, if you don't care if your guys die and you just want to fling the ball like a bastard, then you want to play pro elves. If you want to annoy the holy shit out of people and your guys die every other turn, then you want to play wood elves. <laughs> If, <laughs> if you want to do all of those things but think elves are lame, then you want to play rats. Mm, that's about the extent of that. Like, that's if, the really nice played, part about Blood Bowl. I if feel. you like play, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, that 
Every team is different. Oh, he's donating thralls for me to punch. And That's has wonderful. Strength and weaknesses, so it's there's so much diversity in playing. It. Yeah, I, in my limited experience, and people could tell me that I'm wrong, and I would believe them. But from what I've gathered thus far, um, there are teams that are better than others on paper, but. A particular coach may be really good with one team that's not quite as good on paper, whereas he struggles with another team that other people think is really good, whether it be because he struggles with a certain concept of the game or practice or just his what he's comfortable doing. Uh, so a lot of it's just trial and error. See what you like. Well, that was that. 2-0. We good. You rolled a three for winnings and 50,000. No. I mean, I'm on average going to get better, but that's an apothecary. John Quince Adams, a lineman, gets the, SP, gets the MVP, of course, even though I've only got two on my team. <laughs> and he's got a thrall level up, so that should mean I'm not getting any level ups, but I'm totally going to buy an Apo after the game gets approved. I was going to say, it's a pretty good first game, really. I'm pretty happy with that first game. Nobody died, and I have enough money for an Apo.